<laughs> I wonder what my chances are this morning of interesting you kids in John Keats. No at all. <laughs> Maybe he just wanted to be immortal. All you have to do to be immortal is lead a good Christian life. Anyone can do it if they love the Lord. Well, maybe so, Joe Bob, maybe so. Here now, let me, let me read you this. Archer City, Texas has many things to do. You can enjoy the local sports team playing ball. Who's to say if they're even good this year? The picture shows downtown and plays hit movies straight from Hollywood. There are holiday parties at the community center. Everyone is welcome, so come on down. The people here enjoy the commodities of small town living. Everyone knows one another, and it's super easy to get involved in each other's lives. The people here don't believe in materialistic things. Instead, they value one another's time and appearance more than anything else. It's the closeness of everyone's minds and bodies that leads people to value each other's physical attributes the most. Don't let the young folks sway you from the goodness of this town. What's true about Archer City is that you either leave town or you dine it. I suppose that's true of every hometown. The last picture show was written by Peter Bogdanovich and Larry McMurtry, based on McMurtry's novel. The screenplay was originally birthed from Larry McMurtry. Bogdanovich came in and gave it a screenplay treatment. The film was released in October of 1971. Bogdanovich was an American director who came to prominence after his feature debut film titled Targets, which came out in 68. Targets was about a domesticated Vietnam War veteran who goes on a killing spree after killing his wife and family. The Last Picture Show is a coming-of-age film set in a small, dying Texas town. What's interesting about both is that they are both in-depth, rather bleak, but non-judgmental looks at specific worlds. The Last Picture Show studies an array of characters mixing high school seniors and adults twice their age. The character list is large, but our focus is on Sunny. Side note, I've seen character lists and screenplays twice now, in this and in Dazed and Confused. It's actually a very practical aid when you're reading the screenplay with this many characters. Just reading the synopsis of the last picture show, one could tell it's not going to be a normal venture. There's no overall conflict. At least there's not one antagonistic character. That is mostly because the characters have no goals. While that seems unforgivable by screenwriting standards, that's the whole premise of the script. The film has conflict within scenes, but it's ever-changing. It opens by setting up a conflict between Sonny and Dwayne. Dwayne is going with J.C. Farrow, the prettiest girl in town according to her character description. It's Sybil Shepherd, so yes, the prettiest girl in town, no doubt. Sonny and Dwayne's feud comes to a head after J.C. dumps Dwayne. Dwayne goes off to work only to hear Sonny and J.C. are a thing now, and they fight. Sonny has to wear an eye patch for a while, but the relationship is more or less mended by the end of it. Nothing changes. So long, buddy. So long, buddy. Most of the conflicts do center around Sonny. JC goes through her struggles, but she jams her way into Sonny's life. JC seems to only want drama. She has no self care, she only cares about her vanity and how people see her. She goes along with Lester to the nude pool party only to show that she's a grown-up. 
She finally lets Dwayne have sex with her, only for Dwayne to show no interest anymore. JC then lies about it to get back at her mother and impress her friends. When they finally have sex, JC is unsatisfied, just like her mother said would happen. JC then sleeps with her mother's lover, which she regrets. Then JC hears Sonny has been sleeping with Ruth, the 40 year old wife of the gym teacher. JC only likes Sonny because he liked her. She liked his attention, so she goes after Sonny. They run off and get married only for her to want to be caught. Is the last picture show a tragedy? I think it's very sad and tragic in nature and probably one of the saddest films, but I mean, I mean tragedy in, in the Greek theater description of it. Aristotle says that for a piece of literature to be classified as tragedy, it must have a protagonist that we empathize with. We should fear what they are going through could happen to us and pity them as well. Since Sonny seems to be who we follow the most, we can attach ourselves to him. If not, there are plenty of other conflicted characters to latch on to. And even if none of the characters are that appealing, which can be the case, I attach myself to the familiar landscapes and way of life. It can be taken in many different ways. Most notably, it can be about being stuck in life no matter what situation you find yourself in. Change is always tempting, but it's never easy. That theme comes out of the script about a dying Texas town. What happened to Sonny was out of his control. He was born here. He had nothing to do with that. The idea of a hometown is thrust upon everyone. Sonny saw so many others die here. Sam died. Billy got killed. The movie theater is closing. Nothing good happens to these characters. It's a tragedy because the characters get nowhere and gain nothing by the end. Sure, it doesn't compare to the works of a Shakespearean tragedy with a bombastic ending and one fatal flaw plaguing the protagonist. It's much more aligned with the real world, the real bleak world. The Last Picture Show could be argued as a comedy, but most would call it a melodrama if not a tragedy. There are a handful of comedic moments, but the mood and our and dour ending point to the opposite. The film is also not considered a melodrama because the protagonist is all but simple. The cast list is centered around an ensemble anyway, but Sonny never has any clear goals or motivations and we never figure out the reason behind his actions. Like when he stood by and let Billy, a mentally handicapped teenager, screw around with a prostitute. Sam berates him for it later and Sonny seems to feel bad about it, but nothing changes for him. As I said, Billy and Sam both die in the film, people that were the closest to Sonny. Sam was like a father and Billy was like his brother, and the actual two actors were brothers in real life. Everything was taken from him, but yet he stays in Archer City. A melodramatic protagonist would have left. The tragic nature of the film also opens the door to what the film is about. What even is the premise of the last picture show? It's hard to tell right away because the script won't tell you. It's not found in the dialogue easily and it's hidden under the action. At the forefront we see the characters' relations with each other, which are often sexual. It acts as a distraction, coding the film in lustful actions. One of the reasons those scenes are included is to show that there's nothing to do in Archer City, so everyone reverts to basic forms of carnal relations. These sensual scenes translate into the film much better than the script as well. The sexual tension, the soft gazes, and the untouched yearning breeze by when simply reading the script. Those moments are there, but better viewed visually. Blueprints are vital for creating something, but it's never the end product. You don't make a blueprint for a house and then not expect to build the house. It elevates the art form to its final purpose. It's hard to become emotionally invested in a blueprint. 
With a film on display, everything has come together to manipulate the viewer's feelings. The actors, the cinematography, and editing being the most obvious tools. It's a mean to an end, and it's challenging to divorce yourself from the fact. One piece of dialogue did stick with me, and I think it reigns true. During Dwayne and Sonny's altercation, Dwayne spouts. Here, we did Hell, break you up. Don't even live here I didn't make, I don't make no difference. I'll always live here. I'm getting her back. I'm telling you right now. I'll always live here. The small town mentality will always be with a guy like Dwayne, who struggles to distance himself from his childhood and grow into an independent person. The old folks only live off nostalgia in the town. Char characters like Sam and Lois Farrow just live day to day in pain knowing that their best years are behind them, but halfway accepting it. When a young person like Sonny hears all this talk of old times, it puts undue pressure on him to make something of his youth. The film covers a lot, but McMurtry and Bogdanovich were working from a single idea. Monotony leads to destruction. JC's mother, Lois, makes an effort to detract Dwayne from her so JC doesn't end up like her mother. At first, JC rejects her mother's advice. Lois says this early on in the script. Just remember, everything gets old if you do it often enough. So if you want to find out about monotony real quick, marry Dwayne. It reigns true over everything that takes place in the script, from the aimless from the aimless sense of direction the lack of motivation and clear goals for the characters to the death of the town. Monotony was the destruction of it all. The film begins and ends with the same picture, that of a desolate town, and the picture shows closed. It illustrates perfectly what monotony can do to us, and the premise of the film is tragic. We fear what Sonny and JC and Dwayne are going through it could easily happen to anybody. The last picture show is a tragedy. There's something scary about staying in her hometown. It's as much of a challenge to leave as it is to stay. Some of the kids are able to get away. JC got a way to go to school. Dwayne got a way to go fight in the war. But Sonny's stuck. Something's holding him back. It can be something about staying in your comfort zone and not escaping outside your boundaries to see what else life has to offer. It's not just about staying in your hometown, which is what makes The Last Picture Show one of the greatest films ever. It's been a sad one, so I'll see you later, guys. This has been Andrew. See you.